a KQED HD production. From the peaks of California's High Sierra, the Tuolumne River springs to life. It tumbles thousands of feet into the Hetch Hetchy Valley, where a dam slows its mighty flow and pools its pristine waters for a thirsty population 167 miles to the west. If you're one of our two and a half million customers in the four counties that we serve, you're getting 85% of your water from Hetch Hetchy. And from there, it comes through a variety of pipelines across the Central Valley, pipelines in the East Bay, and then there are pipelines around the South Bay and across the Bay that brings the water to our different customers. Five local reservoirs in Alameda and San Mateo counties supplement the system which delivers, by gravity, nearly 300 million gallons of water a day. For nearly 80 years, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission has been making sure Bay Area taps flow with Hetch Hetchy water. But much of the system was built in the 1920s and 30s. Today, a major earthquake could leave parts of the Bay Area without water for a month. So the aging system is long overdue for a retrofit. The Water System Improvement Program is a $4.6 billion program that will extend through 2016. It encompasses 81 projects, and one of the main goals of the program is to be able to deliver 265 million gallons of water per day to our customers within 24 hours of a major earthquake. One of the largest engineering projects in Bay Area history, it will strengthen dams, boost water storage capacity, and build the first tunnel under San Francisco Bay. The job isn't cheap. San Francisco voters passed a bond measure in 2002 that will double their water bills to pay not only for the seismic retrofit, but also upgrades to drinking water treatment. Hetch Hetchy water system is so incredibly clean, it's one of the few systems in the country that requires no filtration. It does get treated, however, by a chlorine process and also a brand new ultraviolet light process that we've just finished the construction of that plant in the last few months. Because the system crosses three active faults, it's the rumbling threat of earthquakes that drives much of the design and engineering. We are at the Sonoma Valley Water Treatment Plant. This is the site of one of our most critical projects. And what we're doing here is building a brand new treated water reservoir that will allow us to store 17.5 million gallon of water. We are only a couple hundred feet from the Calaveras Fault. The new reservoir needs not only to be secure, but also flexible enough to survive a 6.8 magnitude earthquake on the Calaveras Fault. So this is what we call a drilling pier. We actually have 1,600 of them to anchor the foundation of our new treated water reservoir to the existing bedrock. And the idea here is that we want the foundation of the reservoir to move with a large seismic event. Nearby, the new earthquake-proof Irvington Tunnel is being built alongside the old tunnel. It's a critical piece of infrastructure since it transports 95% of the Hetch Hetchy system's water from Sunol Valley to Fremont. But it's another tunnel extending from Menlo Park to Newark that has drawn much of the attention. After all, it's no easy feat to dig a five-mile tunnel 100 feet below the floor of San Francisco Bay. It's uh, being installed in a clay layer of material that responds very, very well to uh, earthquake problems. Down in a layer that, that's not prone to react during an earthquake to liquefaction. Liquefaction occurs when the shaking from an earthquake causes waterlogged soil to behave like a liquid. A $10 million custom-built tunnel boring machine excavates the dirt like a giant cheese grater and erects the concrete line tunnel at the same time. This machine is unique in that it's an underground factory 
that's uh, 600 feet long. This underground factory consists of sections that trail the machine, sending out dirt and bringing in water, air, and 5,000 pound concrete segments. It eats dirt in the front and it extrudes concrete pipe. Finished tunnel. The concrete tunnel rings will come in two stacks, three high. The ring erector will erect those six rings one at a time, and then the machine will thrust off those rings when it moves forward the next time. Construction manager Bob Muse hopes to excavate 50 feet of tunnel a day, finishing it in 2015. It's a tough job with a lot of pressure, quite literally. The super unique feature of this type of tunneling is that we're resisting the pressure from the water and the earth from 100 foot above. And the, the head of this machine is pressurized and it equalizes that pressure so that this doesn't cave in while we excavate and remove material. The new water pipeline inside the Bay Tunnel will bring billions of gallons of water to the peninsula in San Francisco. It replaces two pipelines built in 1925 and 1936. But as old as these riveted pipes are, they are not as old as other pieces of Hetch Hetchy infrastructure. The Crystal Springs Dam was built in 1890 and survived the great earthquake of 1906. San Francisco's shoddy water supply and broken water mains left the city defenseless against the fires sparked by that earthquake. From the ashes of that tragedy came renewed pressure for a reliable water source. In the 19th century, San Francisco's water, like most cities, was supplied by a private water company, the Spring Valley Water Company, and it had a total monopoly on water supply in San Francisco, and it was absolutely hated by the people in the city. They felt that it provided poor quality water at a maximum price. And to some, like San Francisco Mayor James Phelan, no worldly metropolis could flourish without a bounty of water. Uh, James Phelan was a visionary who wanted to see San Francisco realize what he believed was its destiny to become the Rome or Paris of the Pacific. And so in order to do that, um, he felt that San Francisco would have to reach out and grab the Tuolumne River, which flows through Yosemite National Park, and bring it down to San Francisco. But thanks to the efforts of Sierra Club founder John Muir, Yosemite National Park enjoyed federal protection. Once you draw a line around a particular piece of land and declare it public property for the entire nation, that means it's very difficult to use it for utilitarian purposes. But city officials were set on the upper Tuolumne watershed. The fact that it was in a national park really didn't deter them at all. As a matter of fact, it was an advantage because they felt that the federal government would then protect the purity of its water supply. Local newspapers rallied the public to support building a dam in Hetch Hetchy Valley. With the might of his pen, Muir led the fight to save it. John Muir famously likened the Hetch Hetchy Valley to a great cathedral and that you might as well dam it as to turn the cathedrals of Europe into great water tanks. But Muir couldn't save this granite cathedral. In 1913, Congress passed and Woodrow Wilson signed the Raker Act, which allowed San Francisco to dam Hetch Hetchy. Muir died a year later, broken hearted. San Francisco city engineer Michael O'Shaughnessy toiled for two decades to dam the valley, dig tunnels, and lay hundreds of miles of pipe to bring the water home. Today, the controversy over Hetch Hetchy lingers as groups like the Sierra Club want the dam removed. The state of California did a report a few years back that said it would cost three to ten billion dollars to take down a dam that's paid for and then have to pay again to put something else in its place to store that water. Some environmentalists argue Hetch Hetchy Valley was as glorious as Yosemite Valley and can still be restored. The water can be held in other existing reservoirs and groundwater banks, they say. As the future of Hetch Hetchy is debated, the work to earthquake-proof the water system forges ahead. We have four key pipelines that carry up to 95% of our water supply that cross the Hayward Fault in Fremont in Alameda County. And the last major earthquake on the Hayward Fault was in 1868. So an earthquake on that fault is not a matter of if, but when. 
So we had to come up with a very innovative uh, solution. We are going to be installing a 300 foot long vault that includes multiple segments that are separated by a six inch gap. It will allow the vault to deform without crushing the pipeline that will be inside. Then on both sides, we will install a ball joint. And a ball joint will allow the pipe to rotate up to 12 degrees. We will also install a slip joint. And what the slip joint does is it allows the pipe to slide more than nine feet. San Francisco-based URS Corporation designed these high-tech structures to protect the steel water pipe. The slip joints and ball joints are done especially for us, and none of this size have ever been fabricated anywhere in the world. It's a challenge to keep the Hetch Hetchy system running while re-engineering it to last for future generations. And as the Bay Area grows, so does the need to protect the water the system carries, especially in a disaster. We've done a lot of things to improve building codes, to make sure buildings don't fall down, but all of that falls apart if there's no water. It would be a major economic problem for the entire Bay Area if our water systems failed in an earthquake and you could not get them back up and running quick enough to provide that service to people.